So now we're to part three or part four of my uh, off-grid uh, solar system upgrade. And today I'll be showing you how I installed the Connex SW inverter. And also a little bit about uh, adding a second charge controller. So in the previous um, segment, as I went over the installation of these three Gill brand 200 amp hour lithium batteries. And this, of course, is a great system from Signature Solar. And uh, we've got these ba battery packs hooked up. And then when I initially installed this, uh, we were having a little bit of trouble with uh, the uh, BMS software or the ba battery management system software. And so uh, I got on the uh, phone with, with the good people at Signature Solar and we figured out that this was a brand new model of battery that actually has um, five different uh, or four different um, Ethernet uh, jacks and or connections. Uh, RJ45 connections and um, what we determined was that the newest models of the batteries now have a CAN connector uh, which is a um, battery monitoring protocol by some manufacturers and it has RS485 and it has this battery communication and so only the RS45 was uh, 485 was working and we, we weren't able to daisy chain uh, the communication of the batteries. And so what we ended up figuring out is that we actually have to run three different uh, Ethernet cables, one from each battery, and then up to the um, RS-485 to um, USB uh, dongles here. And we actually are using three dongles, and I have those on a USB hub. And so now... I can use the uh, battery management software and I can uh, switch between uh, the different batteries just by changing the COM port here. So if we can see here, we switch batteries and, uh, and that will update here in just a second. Um, oh, okay, so I didn't have the, uh, all the bat uh, COM ports enabled here. But if I enable all the COM ports here, is that now I can go ahead and I can just switch between COM ports and monitor the different batteries here. And so that will update with the current battery information. Okay, and so you can see here that my state of charge right now is about 65%. And, and that's all good. All right, so... I'm gonna, uh, so I just run a, uh, I just have an, uh, an old uh, inexpensive Asus uh, laptop that I run out here in my uh, solar utility shed uh, to do the battery monitoring. And then I can actually monitor that inside my home uh, via a VNC connection to the, the laptop. So I can actually monitor this anywhere in the world from a remote computer using VNC. Okay, so now that's the battery and the battery monitoring system. Um, after the last episode, I was still running off of my older uh, Trace uh, power station inverter, and this was the 2025 model. And I had a new uh, uh, Schneider Electric Connex SW uh, 20, uh, 24, I believe, is the model number. 2524 is the model number uh, for this inverter. And so my previous inverter here, it's a good old inverter. I mean, heavy duty, built like a tank, and, and it, it did a, a great job uh, in a service. And it's been there for over 20 years and still working just fine. The only difference is, of course, that it's not a sine wave inverter. And this, uh, the new Connex is a uh, true sine wave inverter. Um, and of course, the uh, new Connex uh, SW here, and I presume that the SW stands for sine wave, um, 
is a split phase inverter. And my old inverter was a single phase inverter. And my entire home is wired as single phase. And so this was a, a little bit one of the challenges that we faced uh, uh, in installing this uh, new inverter. All right, so um, the old inverter had uh, these really super heavy duty four aught uh, cable connectors to it. Um, and actually that's a little bit of overkill in, in this situation is the, um, the uh, Connect SW, uh, this, this inverter here, is really a 3000 watt inverter, but it's, it's really only 1500 watts per leg or uh, line. And so it's split phase. And you, so you, if you're only using a single phase of it, it's only a uh, 15 watt, 100 watt inverter. So it's only uh, putting out about 12.5 amps. So fortunately I had these cables that were supplied by, uh, with the uh, battery pack uh, for, for cabling the batteries. And so I'd repurposed the four out cables that I had going to my old lead acid batteries for the battery connection. But then from the, um, in this DC disconnect, uh, panel box is then I was able to run these, uh, these are 25 millimeter squared, uh, metric, uh, cables. They don't have AWG, uh, ratings on them because they're not from America. Um, and so we kind of looked those, I looked those up and they're actually rated for over a hundred amps, uh, at 25 millimeter squared. And so we probably won't be driving that kind of amperage in, into the uh, inverter. So I think those cables are, are going to be, uh, plenty sufficient. So, um, one of the, the challenges I faced was that the, the new Schneider Electronic uh, Connects XW had all of its connections here on this side of it. Uh, so the left side, if I'm facing it here, and this is my left hand. Um, and my former inverter had all the connections on the right side. So, and so it, it went uh, and then it went out to, the, uh, to my home uh, input here and then it went out to the utility shed breaker box here. And so what I had to do is reroute all those cables so that we could uh, route these in the inputs right in here to the left-hand side. Um, of course, this has got some uh, COM um, uh, RJ45 uh, jacks that we are actually not using at, the, at this time. And then well, I had to wire in the uh, two, two lines to the... Um, inverter. So what I'm going to go ahead and, and use the split phase. So what I decided to do was use the uh, second phase or, or line two phase and use that to go into this uh, breaker box here and power um, the utility shed and my tools and, and kind of the workshop. And so I went ahead and we've got a, a Wi-Fi repeater here to, to bring Wi-Fi out into this utility shed and various things plugged in here. And then I ran another outlet up here with some USB connections and an outlet. And then that continues it, uh, through to, to, to power uh, various circuits within this utility shed. And so that's the second phase and the first phase is wired out here and that goes through um, flex conduit and then that goes underground to uh, to our home so uh, and so i decided to just go ahead and use the uh, liquid tight uh, flex uh, uh, conduit uh, although you know it's not a, a true moisture issue but this was kind of a flexible and made for the kind of the easiest routing as far as what uh, how i wanted to to route the the cables here so the only other thing um on here of course this uh bird is quite heavy and so i i had to i mounted some uh two by fours into the walls here and then put a plywood panel and behind that and there's this uh, mounting bracket that came with the inverter which i presume is actually for 
uh, if you were going to have a, a junction box that matched that, that you can mount both the junction box and the inverter right on the same rack. But that uh, rack um, came in really handy. I was able to, you know, screw that to the plywood and then the, the, the inverter itself bolts uh, with four 10 millimeter bolts to, to the, that, that mounting rack. And so that meant was kind of a handy way to do that. Um, the only other circuit that I've ran in here is that I've got a, um, this is basically an AC input circuit. And so if I run my, gener if I ever have to run the generator, uh, with this to use this uh, as a charger, uh, because, uh, this, this particular inverter is an inverter charger and it can be used in a grid tied situation and that would actually tie into the grid and it's a split phase input also so i'm only using one phase uh, the line one phase for my uh ac input there and so i can really only charge about 12.5 amps into it at any particular time and i haven't really even set up the uh, charge controller um, parameters for the lithium batteries yet on the connects. I'm just uh, using it as a straight inverter at this point. So we've been really fortunate with the batteries. Now with 600 amp hours is that I am uh, typically, our typical day usage is only about 20% of the battery capacity. So uh, we're, we're using between four and five kilowatt hours a day. And of course that's supplemented with the solar panels. So if I have a stretch of uh, maybe three, four days without any sun whatsoever, then I might be able to get down to 0% on the batteries and may have to use the generator. But at this point, uh, we're kind of going into a generator free zone, which is, makes me very happy. Okay, next I was going to wire in a second charge controller here um, before I actually installed the inverter, but I changed my mind and um, basically said I'll, I'll go ahead and install the inverter first, and then once I get rid of uh, this old inverter here, I can use that space to run my conduit and, uh, and uh, run my lines to my second charge controller. And the reason that I'm, uh, and you can also note that I kind of, uh, had to reroute and re uh, rewire my uh, trimetric battery monitor here. And this is actually, I'm not uh, using this as much as I used to since uh, now I can m monitor the batteries uh, remotely on the BMS software. Uh, but this tells me right here now that we're actually uh, putting 36.6 amps to the batteries and we're charging 53 uh, we've got 53.7 amps coming off of the panels at this at this moment um, and so the reason I'm adding a second charge controller is that I have uh, both roof panels which come in here and I have uh, ground mounted panels which uh, come in here to the routing box and so right now currently I'm actually just only running my ground mounted panels which is uh, about approximately 1700 watts uh, of, of, uh, of, of panels and then um, I will add the second charge controller because I'm limited to 60 amps on this which is about you know, 1500 watts approximately. Um, and then I'll add the second charge controller, which will uh, come off the roof, roof panels where I have about 900 watts worth of panels. And so that will be some more sup supplemental charging that I will do. And that will be, of course, my uh, next and probably final segment on my uh, off-grid uh, solar upgrade. So if you like this video, you can give me the old thumbs up right down there. And if you like uh, this whole series of videos, uh, I would love for you to subscribe to my channel. And uh, this is Jay with Sagebrush Journal and wishing you happy trails.